Hey, Betsy, how are you doing? Oh, I am just fine, Paul. Psst, how are you? Mrs. Olson. Oh, 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 oh. Hello, first grade. Where you come from? I was just playing with Bertsy Ross and Paul Rehair. It's really Betsy Ross and Paul Revere. But these are colonial friends. You saw them in class before we left. And they are going to help us talk about what times used to be like in the United States. All right. I sent this book home with you earlier. So if you ha don't have it already, you can pause the video and go get it. Your My America and My World book. And we left off on page 40. And we'll be talking about how My America travels. And we'll talk about how we used to travel and how we do now, of course. So follow me along on page 40. It says, America has changed in the way people travel. And there you see the horse and buggy, and you see the old-fashioned Model T, and then of course we know that we have cars that can go on the freeway. Well, normally when you're allowed to leave. And then you see groups of people traveling differently too, right? So again, here you see the, the carriage was kind of like the bus they had back then where lots of people could travel together. And then of course the subways, and the trains, and a bus. And then on page 42, it talks about how Americans used to carry supplies across the country in covered wagons. And now we use large trucks and trains, much like Ivan's dad does when he's a truck driver. Oh, and Yana's dad, <laughs> when he's a truck driver, he drives a truck like this. And then trains and boats have also changed too. They used to look like this, like we talked about for Christopher Columbus and the pilgrims that you, when you came over on the Mayflower, and then they have cruise ships now. And then it says, don't you think that trains have changed a lot too? This is how the steam engine used to look. And now they have motor, uh, mo electric, electric cars like this now, locomotives, and then even air travel has changed, a hot air balloon. And then people named Orville, Orville and Wilbur Wright invented an airplane. And of course, now they look like this. And you know what? I reserved some tickets for tickets for us, and we're gonna get to go on a trip. Oh wait a minute. Let me, let me, uh, let me check my phone a second. See if the, my flight's still. Oh, it says we're gonna have to travel in our minds right now. No, I know that's a scary place. All right. Well, let's talk about how America talks. On page 44, like this. It says Americans get messages to each other differently now than we used to. Native Americans sent smoke signals. So let me try it. Do not try this at home. But let me see if you can see my smoke signal that I'm going to send to you. Can you see it? No. Nope. Not enough smoke. And I wouldn't want to start a fire anyway. I'd get in big, big trouble. So they used to send smoke signals, and in the 1700s, back in their day, the town crier cried out messages to the town. Hear ye, hear ye. I think I hear one now, and that's how you would get news. And then the Pony Express carried the mail from 1860 to 1861. That's when they would have stations again, and they would have the horse rider ride the horse about maybe 20 miles, and then you'd be so tired from running the horse would be, that is, that they would need to stop at a station and a new rider and a fresh horse would take the message. And again, it still took a long way, a long time to get the mail anywhere. And then stagecoaches used to carry the mail too. All right now I'm on page 45 and I will show you the kind of telephone that Mrs. Olson used to have when she was growing up. Not really. It wasn't quite this old, but this is an antique telephone. Now, it's not all put together. That's why the wires are everywhere, but you would have to dial it up like this. Instead of using your buttons, you would need to turn the crank like this and dial it, and then you would talk into the mouthpiece like this, and here was your receiver, and this is the old-fashioned way of talking. Isn't that pretty cool, though? This is what phones used to look like. I sure wish I knew what one looked like today. I don't have one. I don't know. Hollywood. Is this a phone? I... <gasps> Look at there. It is Hollywood. I tell you what, these videos are getting, they're getting out there. They're going viral. Should I, should I answer it? Hollywood? Yes? 
Oh, oh, you want me to star in a movie? Oh, well, but I haven't traveled yet. Where, I know, I'm not sure where Hollywood is. It's in California. Oh, I think I knew a family that moved up here from California. They were named the Pulowskis. Is everyone in California like the Pulowskis, though? Oh, okay. All right, so you're saying it would be a nice place to visit. Well, you know, actually, I love the Pulowski family that came from California, so if everyone's like them, I would love to visit and star in your movie. I will get there as soon as we are able to travel again. Thanks so much. Bye. So see how much phones have changed from this to this? That is amazing, isn't it? So you used to be able to, at least you could speak to the people thousands of miles away, even the old-fashioned way. That was much faster than that Pony Express. We can read the newspaper. I know you don't really know what those are either. In fact, in my antique phone here. Oh, <laughs> oh here we go. Okay, see? There's some old newspapers I found in here. And I was pretty excited to see this was from Denver. That's where the Broncos are. Way back from 1968. This is an old, old newspaper. So this is how people used to get the news. All right. Some people still choose to do it that way. But otherwise, it's so much easier just to Google things, isn't it? All right. So now we use the Internet to find out what happens in our world every day. And the mail truck is much faster than the Pony Express. Airplanes carry mail to faraway places, and with radios, computers, which thankfully uh, you're probably on right now, or an iPad or something, and televisions, we can hear and see what is happening far away. So we can see how much our country has changed already, and then starting tomorrow, we get to begin on our trip and talk about how America is beautiful. And I know before we left, <clears throat> we were able to check off 32 states and Washington, D.C. So we pretty much, um, let's see, um, unless you have some others to uh, hand in, I, we checked up everything that came in already. I just wanted to add that I can add Utah here, so I'll be checking off Utah right here. There was one more we hadn't had yet because Miss Olson found a Salt Lake City cup from Salt Lake City, Utah. So I'll show you this a little closer so you can take a closer look with your parents and we will post a picture of this so you can see what states we still need. So if you have been to Colorado or Kansas or Oklahoma or Nebraska or North Dakota, you can see which states we still can check off while we're traveling around the United States. All right, and I'm wearing my St. Louis, Missouri shirt. Now we already have Missouri checked off, thanks to Allison because she beat me to it. But I thought I'd go ahead and show you a souvenir I had from St. Louis, Missouri. All right. We'll talk with you later. Goodbye.